Welcome to another episode of our 1500 horsepower Mercedes 190E Evo 2 build. On the last episode, we built a whole new tubular subframe. We addressed the issue with the steering rack. Uh, so that is done now, it is bolted in. And you guys can check out the previous video if you want to see any of that. In this video, we are going to be doing the Weird. control arms. Yeah, <laughs> it's time. Yes. We're, we're going to address the serious issue with engine swaps in the 190E. And that's the, the typical steering rack, con lower control arm clearance area, right? So you can tell by looking at this one just how significant of a clearance yeah, you have to make. <laughs> and obviously, you can't use this to drive on. So new. we're gonna make a new one. Uh, we're gonna make an all tubular one with double adjusters, you know, Heim joints. We're going all in on this. And this is something that uh, we're going to be, well, we're kind of developing it on the Evil Evo. It's a, it's, a, it's a pretty fancy test mule, but that's what it is. So again, this car is like a test mule for the rest of these cars. Yeah. Uh, because they're going to be getting the same tubular suspension, which right. is pretty awesome. Yeah. And so are we going to make this tubular arm also available for them, for yeah. the public? I mean, that's, that's the, the uh, idea. The okay. intent is that. Because I think, I mean, as we address, this is a really common issue. And if we can make this available for everyone so that their swaps are that much easier, then we'll have done all the hard work for you. So just hit us up. The green tape here represents my one inch chromoly tubing that I'm gonna use. Okay. And the orange tape is actually just a silhouette of what the stock lower control arm was. Oh. So just laying it out like that was kind of a simple way of designing the tubular work within the constraints of what was. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. So I know for sure that the turning radius of the wheel and everything is gonna work perfectly. We have, uh, uh, an FDF race shop, to, um, it's called a double adjuster. That's on that side, and this right here is just an inline variation of that very same thing. Yeah. So you'll have, you know, this is the front of the control arm. You'll have adjustment in both ways without having to take it off the car, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that will just allow for a lot of movement. After pressing out the ball joints, we're going to take the factory ball joint and shave it down a little bit and use that as part of our jig fixture. So when we go and put the ball cups for the new lower control arms in place, they will be located by that factory ball joint so all the angles and everything are captured on the jig fixture and plate. Okay, so building the jig fixture for the lower control arm for the Evil Evo. And I don't want to overcomplicate it. And I just so happen to have this fixture table. So I'm going to use this to my advantage. Instead of building a standalone plate or some tube frame or whatever to hold all the points for the lower control arm in space, I'm just going to use my table for what it's exactly intended for. And so I just took some some simple plate, made some holes that correspond with the holes in my table, and that is gonna go over in there like so, right? Oh. I put a little bend on it so it only goes where it goes, right? So now with these plates in place, and I'll locate them with uh, my fixture table stuff. Yep. So that'll just go in there like that. We'll get locked down. Now it won't move. I'll have that in a couple of spots. So what I've decided to do is I'm just, I just simply made some tabs to stand off and capture the points for the, the pivot points. And those will get welded on that center line on there like so. That'll give that a lockdown spot. And then this one over here where the ball joint goes into it, I took the, the actual ball joint from the lower control arm 
and I cut it apart, welded a bolt to it, and with this piece right here in there, bolted on and captured, I'm gonna take another, another little bit of plate, like not this piece, but I'll bend, I'll have that lifted and I'll bend a piece and I'll have it welded to this plate to the underside of this. And that will give me the exact location relative to pivots yeah. and the angle and, and all of that in space. But so, what about the height and stuff? So the height, I can just make whatever I want it to, to be, right? Yeah. I chose it to be this height here okay. because I know that my one inch chromoly tubing that I'm gonna be fabricating out of is gonna dip down oh. and come close to the table here yep. and then back up to the double adjuster nut over here. And that's to make clearance yeah, for, for, the, yep. for the, the outer tie rod mm -hmm. of the steering system for this lower control arm. So after having the jig fixture prepared, ready to go, the next step was to prepare all the tubing. So we did all of that before we did any bending or coping in all the areas where there's going to be any kind of welding. After having tubes prepared, we brought it over to the bender, did all the bending on all the tubes. And because they're mirror images, once we had the angles and everything set from the table fixture layout that we did, it was an easy enough thing to just replicate it in mirror image for the second one. So during this machining phase, we're actually doing the ball cups for the new lower control arms. So we'll put that all in place, get those onto the factory ball joints that we fabricated into our fixtures. So once all the pieces are prepped and ready for welding, all the coping's done, we can then start placing all the tubes on the jig fixture themselves, getting the elevation and everything correct, connecting the pivots to the ball cups, and siamesing both tubes together where they dip down for the tie rod clearance. Once that was all said and done, we started just machining the spacers. So the heim joint spacers are there to take up the extra space that the original rubber bushings were taking up in the pivot points on the chassis. So we heated up the chromoly tubing before welding, just kind of take a little bit of the stress out of it and then we TIG welded the whole lower control arm in place. And what we see is the final result. It looks amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's it pretty cool, so I'm pretty cool. stoked on it. It's uh, significantly lighter than what the factory lower control arm is. Well, so let me so get we'll have to measure it. Even though it's lighter, it feels so substantial. Oh, like, yeah. it feels beefy. Yeah. Light but beefy. <laughs> <laughs> beefy. Oh my gosh, that is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's pretty good. It should work really well. We've got lots of clearance in here for the tie rod to pass through. Lots of adjustability options. Lots of like adjustability. Literally. But it looks awesome. It's time to put them in the car. I mean, that was kind of the point of why we did this, right? Yeah. To get all of this room right here. Yeah, look at that. That's so much room. That's awesome. I'm pretty happy with how that went in. Yeah. Went in easily, as it should, since I did make a jig fixture off the stock arm. But uh, it's definitely precise, mm -hmm. so. All right, so we got our tubular control arms built. Those are mounted in the car. Everything is looking good on that front. So all that stuff's done. We got it together. We've got some tie rod arms made. And then next up is we're going to get the dry sump in it and then get the motor back in it. Awesome. So when are when, when can we expect uh, donuts, burnouts? <laughs> Not right now because it's pretty freezing outside. <laughs> yeah, it's cold. We have a second winter here. So yeah. we're going to have to push that back maybe a few weeks. But 
very, very soon. Like, subscribe, listen to the podcast. We have too many things. Too many things. TikTok, Instagram. Yeah. Like it on all the things. (laughs) Okay, see you guys next week.